while applying single effects to files works, using the effects rack allows you to easily stack and even reuse processes across multiple files. We'll now configure some common useful effects for our voice track. So one thing we definitely wanna do as well is to reset our waveform view so that it's back to where it was before. Because not only do we want to gate out any of these silent bits, but we're gonna to wanna to use the effects rack to actually bring up the volume on her voice as well. So let's go over here to our effects rack and we'll open it up. Here is a rack where you can stack different effects on your file. The first thing we're gonna do is choose the one that we just messed with and canceled. So clicking on this little arrow here allows us to choose from the same effects that we have up in the window menu. So we have amplitude and compression, and there's our dynamic processing. And notice that it actually retains a memory of my last configuration here. So since I already went through and tested that out, it's gonna work just fine for what I'm doing. I can actually go ahead and either move this off to the side or close it all together. We'll just put it off to the side here so I can keep track of the different effects that I'm putting on here. All right, I'm gonna wanna adjust the EQ as well. So that's always a good idea to do with voice because then people with higher voices, you can make their voice more pronounced and people with lower voices, you can tweak those bits and you can also go through and change the mids and get rid of any frequencies you don't really need. So I'm gonna click on this arrow here and let's go to filter and EQ. And I like to use a parametric equalizer. So let's open that up. And what I'm gonna need to do to configure my equalizer, I can tweak any of these different uh, frequencies here, or I can always choose a preset. So if you look all the way to the bottom here, we can see vocal enhancer. Since this is voice, maybe this is a good start for us. So let's first listen to this with our power state off for our EQ. I'll just move this over here a little. And let's make a selection so that it can loop. Go to spark.adobe.com. Go to spark.adobe.com. All right. So there it is with the parametric equalizer off. Let's toggle that on. Go to spark.adobe.com. Go to spark.adobe.com. So we can Go see exactly where the different frequencies are lying here across our equalizer. And using any of these little touch points, we can make adjustments to how things actually are shaped. So if we wanna pull down those super high ones there, we can do that. Maybe even pull down some of these here. So what we're basically doing is just stating to our equalizer, the pieces that we want to be more pronounced, the different bands, and those that we don't really care for. So notice if I do something like this, it really crushes those highs down quite a bit. And of course, we don't want to do that too much, especially with a voice that um, you know generally has a more pronounced high. So notice too, as I move number four around here, we can see down here number four, it's actually shifting around. So what do these numbers mean? This is the actual frequency here that we're targeting. And then this one here is the change in decibel level. So I'm actually pulling that up a little bit, making it a little louder. I could always push it down as well. And this is a good way. You, of course, you would have to play with the particular voices that you're dealing with here because they're all different, right? Everybody's voice is different. So I'm gonna say that's okay. Um, let's stop the playback because that's getting a little crazy. Um, and we can see both of these are active now. So when I play them back, my gating is working through my 
dynamics processing effect, and my parametric equalizer is working to enhance her voice. So the last thing I want to do is definitely change this uh, loudness here. And one of the good ways to do that is through a hard limiter. So you might be tempted to use a normalization routine. I don't like to normalize voices because it tends to just sort of be kind of dumb about how it lifts the different peaks or crushes them and so forth. It, it does things in a very robotic way. When you use something like a limiter, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to retain those peaks and valleys in a normal way, except it's going to actually go through and only apply the limiting when necessary. So if we look here, you can see there's also a speech volume leveler here. So there's lots of different uh, choices for this type of work, but I'm going to choose hard limiter uh, just to give an example. All right, so here's our hard limiter, and let's have a look. Right here where you got default, let's actually limit this to negative three decibels. Okay, so here we can see the maximum amplitude is negative three decibels, and we're boosting the input signal by six decibels. The look ahead and release time is going to depend on when this thing kicks in. So when it starts and sort of when it releases afterwards. All right, so let's have a look. Um, we can actually keep an eye on input and output right here inside of our effects rack to see how things are gonna change. So we don't actually need a selection here. Let's just start right here and listen. Go to spark.adobe.com. So you can see immediately that this is getting a nice boost right here. And we don't even need the limiter. It's not really kicking in yet. However, if I pull up our input boost, we've got some clipping going on. That sounds terrible, right? So we know we want to pull that down. And this is one of the problems you can encounter, of course, with limiters, is that they are a hard limiter. So it's going to clip anything that gets too loud. And we're almost there. I'm thinking about 10, 9 to 11 maybe, like a 10.8. That's Yeah, so we're getting a little tiny bit of red there, but that's fine because it's not getting past that negative 3 decibel mark. So that's going to work wonderfully for us. Okay. With all of that done, I can actually go ahead and close this all out. So closing these effects windows doesn't actually remove the effect at all. It's simply removing those windows from our view. So if we wanted to tweak those anymore, we could, of course, just double click and open up these windows again. But there we go. We've got our effects rack set up. It's going to gate all of our lows. It's going to put some EQ on everything. And then it's going to really bring the volume up on her voice for us.